Now, he's a five-time Oscar nominee, starring roles in the likes of Shackleton, Dunkirk and Harry Potter. So, Kenneth Branagh, though, his latest film is, well, it's his most personal yet. It's kind of semi-autobiographical story about his childhood in Northern Ireland. Well, Sir Kenneth Branagh joins me now. Congratulations. I mean, this was, as we said, a very personal project. And when you put it out there, you know, you put so much heart and soul into it. You must be absolutely delighted by the reviews. I'm thrilled, Lorraine, and um, yes, it is very personal. And <clears throat> what I've been so rewarded by is just how many people themselves identify with it, recognise it, and get something personal for them or their experience of their family lives as well. So the way it's made an impact on people who may not know much about Belfast, but they know about their own lives and their own families, that's been really a great thrill. Absolutely, because you showed people trying to get on with their everyday lives in an possible situation because that's what we all have to do that's what we've all been trying to do for the past couple of years so again you know for me it resonated because of all the nostalgia because Glasgow and Belfast are very similar and I grew up in a, in a very similar way they but are. for people who are a bit younger they can get so much from this film well, I hope so, because, uh, I mean, it was written at the beginning of the lockdown when we all felt so unsettled, you know, there was so much of a sense of the unknown, and I think we became very aware of what was precious to us. We really missed the connection, the human connection, often with friends and with family, you know, and I think that, you know, this film was partly a sort of response to, you know, really celebrating what are these little bits of connective tissue between us? What are those moments when times are grim, when you look for the, the closest route to humour uh, or to music or to dance? or daft jokes or all the kind of glue that can bind a family and a life together. Well, your love for the city and, and for the people who live there shines through, you know, in, in every frame, even through the really, the really tough scenes that, that obviously had to be reflected. But that's what I mean about it having such a lot of heart and I think that's why it's connecting with so many people. I've been so amazed, Lorraine. I, I've, I've, I've seen people, uh, an Iranian filmmaker came up to me having seen the film and said, that's my story. A 20-year-old lad from Haiti, the same thing. Uh, a, a man from the Congo who, who saw it and said, that's my story. Lots of people who, whose families are prone to having to make these big decisions, many yeah. families do. And also the, the story is about the sacrifice that parents make so many times every single day in the small and the large for their, for their children. And, I, you know, it's the NA that ain't easy, but it's often very beautiful. And I think uh, people seem to have uh, responded to that. And and, uh, and I think, you know, Belfast, as you say, an impossible situation, there are dark, dark times, but I think it, that's a spirit. And that's, and Glasgow's another part of the world <laughs> where this happens, where the ability, the ability to see the funny side, sometimes very painfully earned, but the funny side in difficult situations that allows us to put one more foot in front of the other when times are tough, I think is something it's it's great to be reminded of and you know be inspired by that kind of people. No, absolutely. There's a lot of Bailey laughs, an awful lot of Bailey laughs, and um, mostly shot in black and white. Was that a decision that you made right from the very start? It was. It's a beautiful yeah. treatment for yeah. you know period, and uh, Belfast was very rainy growing up. Part of the film is in colour. We see modern Belfast in colour, and we also feature cinema experiences that we had going to the movies as you can imagine as a family was an incredibly important experience for me and all of that is in sort of very splashy color but the 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 uh, the black and white is a sort of velvety silky black and white that i think you know everybody looks really good in black and white and we have some amazingly sort of charismatic people in Kadrina Balfe who plays Mara Jamie Dorn and handsome as all get out <laughs> and uh, the great Judy Dench Kieran Hines and this amazing young lad Jude Hill oh no can we talk about Jude Hill because he is such a, a natural little actor. I mean, astonishing. Of course, you're directing him, um, masterclass that he's getting from you. But this wee boy's very special. He is. He, he, you know, he, first of all, he got the part out of 300 lads who sent tapes in from all over Ireland. And uh, he's got this capacity to be really there and listening. You know, he's not somebody who's preparing listening's really about getting ready to say the next thing that he has in his mind. He's really listening. Yeah. He's funny. Um, and he's, uh, he's, he, we knew that the film was going to play out, you know, written across his face. And, uh, yeah. and that capacity to see that sort of wonder, that, that moment in many people's lives, it's another reason why people seem to be drawn to the film because mm -hmm. it, it charts that moment perhaps when 
innocence is, is lost or the edges start being rubbed off and you have to start acquiring all the things that sometimes the grown-up experience requires of you. And he does that step by step. You see it happening sort of in real time. Mm -hmm. And apart the, from the fact that he's a Liverpool supporter and the character really should be supporting Tottenham Hotspur, he was brilliant. He was. He was. And Dame Judy reunited with her, of course. And uh, she loves working with you, doesn't she? Well, she says she does. I think uh, uh, she, of course, is a she. She's a she's such a, a kind of uh, beacon of uh, professionalism and and just uh, she's one of those people. She loves people. Uh, she'd be a remarkable person in any field of life. She happens to be given us this great gift of her skill as a as an actor. But you know, in this film, you know, she has a great relationship with her own grandson, a wonderful lad. She went straight like a like a you know made a beeline for young Jude Hill, and that cross-generational thing when young people have a very close bond with their grandparents is something yeah. she knew and she made that an authentic experience with Jude and their relationship on set to see that developing felt very, very authentic. So she brings she brings this enormous heart. She's very funny and, of course, she's, she's very naughty as well. She is very naughty. It must be really good fun. So we've got this to look forward to. Belfast is out in cinemas on Friday. But also, though, the moustaches are back. The moustaches are back in, in February, aren't they? Hercule Poirot rides again. Indeed, yeah. Last time we, we saw each other was, was just before Murder on the Orient Express. He's back. It's, de it's Death on the Nile. And, uh, you know, I think it's one of... Agatha Christie's absolute favourite, yeah. um, and we I, we've got a great cast together, and uh, I think and a lot of interesting twists actually. People always think they know exactly what's gone on, because we have some characters from the previous movie making another appearance, and because Michael Green, the screenwriter, was given permission by the Agatha Christie estate, we have a ah. few extra twists that I think will absolutely fox people. So if you think you've seen it, you haven't, and I, I hope you'll 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 be surprised by this one. I think so. You've been very busy because we're also going to see you. Those pictures of you as Boris Johnson are actually quite terrifying. You, you look so like him. It's crazy. Well, it, there was an amazing team, you know, the, the skill in this country in terms of uh, prosthetic makeup. So Vanessa White and her team who put that together were uh, were incredible. Uh, yes, you, you know, the, as you know, the lockdown does strange things. And as far as work that some of us do, it's a bit like waiting for a bus, isn't it? You know, you wait for ages for one and then three <laughs> come together. So that seems uh, that seems to have been how it's worked with, with stuff that I've done during this period. No, that's true. And it all comes out. It all comes out at the same time. That is going to be great, though. I don't know how I don't know how you're going to reflect because it's changing all the time, as we know, changing all the time. But I can't wait to see that. Meanwhile, of course, we, we can enjoy we can enjoy Belfast and and I love the way as I said to you the, the way that you show the city at the at the start the modern beautiful vibrant Belfast and um, it's just like a it's just like a love letter thank you so much it's always great to talk to you and you Lorraine thanks for having us on thank again you. I really appreciate your thoughts about the film and and uh, thanks so much oh wonderful it's out in movies on Friday and I highly recommend it. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.